you are probably here because words like styling, layout or center align make you punch a hole through your monitor. That's because you are not following the first rule of front-end development. Never use CSS. Thanks for watching. On a serious note, nowadays UI and UX are very important when building software products. Luckily for us, there are tools out there designed to make your life easier. You have access to UI kits and component libraries like Material Design and Designer Bootstrap, which come with a lot of already styled components and best practices baked in. Also, you have access to CSS preprocessors like SAS or LESS, which help you better maintain and organize those heavy CSS files you are used to. In this video, we'll build a small user interface using SAS and some other basic styling rules and concepts you should know regardless of your background. You'll go from a bare bones HTML structure to something looking like this. Please also like this video and subscribe to the channel and in return I'll show you a picture of two very cool cats dancing. One of the main things I'm doing while working on UI is heavily use the browser dev tools. This allows me to get a quick understanding of the DOM structure, see the styling rules and prototype new ideas quickly. In our example, we have a wrapper div with the card class name. I advise you to create a separate SAS file for each individual component and use the SAS import function to bring all this together in a resulting index file. In a newly created folder called components, I added a card SAS file and I'm importing this in the main index.scss file. Focus as much as possible on writing clean rules in a self-explanatory file structure. We can test that our setup works by adding a CSS rule for our card component. We'll use the CSS selector for classes, which is a dot, and we'll add a width of 400 pixels, which will trigger an update on the left-hand side preview. SAS allows you to declare and use variables across the project, and I advise you to do this as often as possible. You'll end up having a central point where all constant values are stored. From there, you can easily change the whole appearance of your app by simply updating the values. Variables can be used to do string interpolation as well, which is useful to avoid hardcoding class names or IDs since these could change later in the development process. For now, I'm declaring the class name and the card width. Once the vars are imported in the card.scss file, we can use them to update our rules accordingly. Next, I want to align this card to the center of my screen. Since the card element is wrapped in a div which has the container class, this can be done easily. First, let's make sure our container has the same width and height as the viewport. Then, we can center align the content of this div by using display flex and the align item and justify content properties. This is a very easy way to center align any content inside a DOM element, as long as that DOM element has a clearly defined width and height. As a quick FYI, you might already know that DOM elements have a default styling. For instance, the body element comes with a predefined 8 pixels margin on Chrome and will override that to zero. In real projects, you can use a CSS reset solution which removes all the browser inconsistencies caused by these default styles. We'll also add a general background variable for the body class and make sure to always use relative paths when importing SAS files. Let's improve the appearance of our card component. I'll add some more variables in our parse file, but keep in mind that there is always a balance between having just the right amount or too many configuration variables. My rule of thumb is to add here all the values which apply generally to the app, like font sizes, font families, borders and so on. Then add the basic appearance rules for components you know you'll use quite a lot in the app. I'm also defining a general margin value of 24 pixels. We'll use this value as a default for all components which need any kind of space. For the card component, I want to add some space between the container margins and the content inside the container. We'll add a padding constant for that, which references the general margin rule. We can make the card stand out a little bit more by adding a box shadow. At times, I use the dev tools directly to prototype and test my CSS rules. Once I have something that looks good enough, I move it over into the SCSS files. I also want to use a custom font face for my app. Let's head over to Google Fonts and select one of the more popular sans serif fonts. Keep in mind that loading this font on a web page will take time if the resource is not cached. To avoid slow initial loading times, always avoid adding all variations the font offers and select only the weights you know you'll use. Downloading this into our app is very straightforward. We'll just copy the import rule that Google provides into our index.scss file and then update the font family rule in the body tag. This rule will apply for all elements inside the body container. Let's style the avatar next by using SAS nested rules support. 
These rules will apply only to the avatar elements which are placed inside the card element. Margin0 auto centers the div to the center of its container. We'll make this a round div by setting the border radius to 50% and we'll load an image as the background for the div element. In real life scenarios, users will upload their own images and you'll use the URLs to those images instead. We can use the background size cover attribute so that the image fits nicely into the available space. I am also adding some custom text styling for the HTML and h5 elements. Note that I am using the tag names and avoid defining classes or IDs as much as possible. Because everything is nested under the card class name, all these rules will be scoped and headers outside this component will not be affected. Since we discussed the margin zero auto rule, let's clarify these rules which support a variable number of values. We'll take the padding rule for instance, which sets the space between the container margin and the content inside it. Setting the padding to simply 10 pixels, we'll just add the 10 pixel space inside all sides of the container. Using a value of 10 pixels and 20 pixels, we'll assign the 10 pixels to the top and the bottom of the container and the 20 to the left and the right. Finally, using three or four values, we'll assign the value to each of the sides of the container in in the clockwise manner. It's now time to style the bottom navigation. We'll first remove the default unordered list, margin padding and styles. Then using the direct child selector we will focus on the first menu level. The easiest way to arrange these options in a line is to use display flex. For each list element we'll set the flex value to 1 so each child takes the same amount of horizontal space from the parent. For the links we are just going to make the text look a bit nicer and this allow user selection via the user selection none rule. It's a good practice to do this on any clickable element just to avoid weird selection behaviors. Also we'll use some borders, some paddings and some negative margins to align these elements nicely in the card component. Since each list element has a right hand side border it is a good time to look at the nth, first and last child selectors. This allows you to target a specific child inside the parent. In our case, we want the last list element to have the right border of zero. We can also style the hover state so that the user is given a visual cue when he hovers the mouse over something that is clickable. By the way, here is the cool cat's dancing photo I promised you. Aren't you happy you stayed until the end? Finally, let's style the submenu under the more option. To do this, first let's make sure the submenu is visible when we hover over the option. Next, we want to take this element outside the normal DOM flow. Using position absolute allows us to position the submenu relative to the closest position parent and overlap other elements. Of course, this barely scratches the surface of styling web apps. But hopefully I was able to give you a quick overview of the basics and you should be able to more confidently tackle styling problems from now on. Thanks for watching.